December 7th, 1941. A day that will live in infamy is usually what we hear when we say that, don't we? Torah, Torah, Torah. That was the code language that Commander Mitsuo Fuchida used. Tiger, tiger, tiger. It meant they had achieved complete surprise. And seven and a half years later, he survived the war. Millions didn't. The carnage of World War II. Seven and a half years later, he, uh, he was in the Shibuya train station. Fuchida was. The commander of Pearl Harbor. He was in the Fuchi Shibuya, trust me, if there's any Japanese out there, Hamilton's will straighten me out later. He was in the Hillsboro train station. <laughs> My linguistic abilities. Uh, in Tokyo. And he saw a Japanese man in a black suit with a gentle smile beside several boxes stacked up holding a small black book in each hand. Man shall not live by bread alone, he called out. Get your Bible. Food for your soul. No book in the world can compare with it. Read it for yourself. 30 days anywhere and you'll see. Fuchida walked near to the man. He was interested, but something inside him felt like testing him. You speak of a God we can't see. The man let his arms drift down. Yes, and we wait patiently for him to return again. The man leaned forward with a kind glint in his eye and replied, You don't know him, do you? Feeling uncomfortable, Fuchida dug into his pocket. How much? Three yen. Fuchida was a little surprised and even suspicious. Why so cheap? He found the right coins, dropped them in the man's outstretched hand, and reached for the book. It didn't cost much to purchase, the man said as Fuchida grabbed the book. But the vendor kept his grip on it and looked Fuchida in the eyes. The true cost is in following. They both held still for a moment. Then the vendor released his grip with another disarming smile, reached into his box, grabbed another Bible, and held both hands up again. Read any pages of this book, and you'll know it's true. Test it and see for yourself. Well, Fuchida took that book home and secretly, didn't even let his wife know, he read. And by September of 1949, he had read through volume one, Luke's account of Jesus Christ. And he came to and read Luke 23, when they came to the place called the skull, there they crucified him and the criminals, one on the right and one on the left. But Jesus was saying, Father, forgive them, for they do not know what they are doing. And he, Mitsuo Fuchida, the samurai warrior, wept freely and that night he began a correspondence he wrote to the address of the man who had given him the New Testament and they began a correspondence the man's name was Kaniji and 18 months later they had been corresponding 
and they met for the first time April 14th, 1950. By the way, I tell you these dates because these things happen. Just like Luke will tell you, it was in so-and-so's first term in office. Christianity happened, okay? It's history, and your life is happening. And Mitsuo Fuchida's life happened. And on April 14, 1950, they met for the first time in a hotel lobby in Osaka, Japan. There were four men, two Americans and two Japanese, as well as Mitsuo Fuchida. And they tried to kind of restrain their excitement as they got to know him because he was a national known hero of Japan. And he was known an ordinary man. Well, they got to know him and they realized he is. He has come to know Jesus Christ. He is a real follower of the Lord Jesus. And so Kaniji told him, as a Christian, you uh, should let others know what God has done for you. Fuchida recoiled in puzzlement and with offense. What? I haven't even spoken to my wife about this. This is a completely private matter. Fuchida glanced around the room, surprised that none of them seemed surprised. Kaniji even smiled a bit. Do you know what people would say? People would consider me a traitor to embrace the God of my enemies? Fuchida shot his arm out. The God of the Americans? No, this is something I will not do. The group in the lobby went silent for a few seconds. Kaniji responded softly, just for you to know, Jesus is not from America. <laughs> Everyone smiled except Fuchida. He was serious and let his eyes fall to the floor in contemplation. Kaniji leaned in toward the captain as Fuchida was now known. Listen, you do what you want. But remember this. Fuchida looked up into Kaniji's eyes that spoke of a deep wisdom. Christ said, Whoever is ashamed of my, me and my words, of him will the Son of Man be ashamed when he comes in his glory and the glory of the Father and of the holy angels. And of course, He's quoting volume one too, isn't he? Luke 9, 26. If you've been with us through Luke. Fuchida's gaze again drifted downward. But you must decide what you will do. He wasn't prepared for this. His posture fell. All Fuchida wanted was some advice to help confirm some ideas about what it really meant to be a true follower of Christ. He liked living his life as a nobody on a farm with his family. Life was simple. He was happy to be left alone. Now it was becoming complicated again, and he chafed at the idea. But inside, he knew he was being a coward. Well, the guys, the four men, said, why don't you come with us? This very day they met him. Why don't you come downtown with us? We're going to go out and tell people about Christ. You just watch. So they went downtown, and they set up their little portable microphone, or, uh, yeah, little PA, you know. And uh, they preached, and people listened just a little bit and keep going. You know how it is. And uh, he watched. And the missionaries finally, after some long time, were running out of steam. And it was just about, they were just about to shut it down. And a middle-aged woman, listening with a blank, hopeless face, caught Fuchida's eyes. If for no one else, he would speak for her. He stepped up onto the platform and to Kaniji's surprise, stood behind the microphone. 
My name is Mitsuo Fuchida, he proclaimed loudly. I served our emperor with devotion and loyalty as if he were my father. I was proud to lead the attack on Pearl Harbor. Electricity shot through the air. Bystanders on the sidewalk came to standstill and turned to look. Fuchida's heart pounded. Yes, that's right. I am Fuchida. I sent the message, Torah, Torah, Torah. I believed in the war that we were on a righteous path, that we were superior to other nations and races, and that we had a great destiny to fulfill. And if you ever see a picture of him in his aviator hat, and it's, you know, you'll see a little thin mustache. He grew in honor of Adolf Hitler. People cautiously moved toward the platform almost in disbelief. Whispers trickled through the growing crowd as others pointed For years we were told over and over that we stood high above all the nations of the world. But where did this proud idea lead us? Doesn't Yamota mean great harmony? Yet what harmony did we produce? In seeking honor for ourselves, instead we reaped disgrace. Kaniji was mesmerized. He never imagined Fuchida could speak like this. He couldn't. But the Holy Spirit can. You'll receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you, and you will be my witnesses. He goes on. I thought how I had waged war with hatred and revenge in my own heart, a war that led to the deaths of millions of people. He paused to control his own unexpected emotions. I would give anything to take back my actions at Pearl Harbor, but this is impossible. What can I possibly say to the God above but to ask forgiveness? I didn't know what I was doing. That day marked a huge turning point for Mitsuo Fuchida. And he went on and proclaimed Jesus Christ the rest of his life until he died in 1976. He proclaimed Christ to whoever listened. A lot of people listened because of who he was. And uh, he proclaimed Christ to the remotest parts of the earth. He went around the world as an evangelist. Now, you say, wow. Well, there is the rest of the story. As there usually is. Uh, I didn't read everything he said. Listen to this. Because, you see, witnessing isn't merely with a microphone, although it often is in those kinds of settings. But, you see, some sow, some water, but God causes what? The growth. I don't lead anybody to Christ. You don't lead anyone to Christ. I can't take a man from light to darkness. Neither can you. But God is pleased by his Holy Spirit, to use us as we allow him to use us. So uh, here's something else he shared that day from that sidewalk in his very first testimony. I heard of a girl whose parents were killed by Japanese soldiers. Yes, I'll say. Peggy Covell. Her parents sent her home from the Philippines as the Japanese were encroaching. She came back to America. They fled, as everyone had to. They went into occupied China. They lived in the jungle. The Japanese found them and slaughtered them. And uh, that was Peggy Covell's parents. And Fuchida says, I heard of a girl whose parents were killed by Japanese soldiers. Fuchida said, war is war. We do it, they do it. That's just the way it is. And after the war, he still believed that. And when the POWs from America were coming back, he, no doubt, he was being kicked, pricked in the goads. If you're reading Acts, you know what I mean. 
But he went down to the dock to greet the POWs, the returned POWs. And in the Battle of Midway, he had lost his chief mechanic for his whole fleet. He had 146 pilots behind him. And he'd lost his chief mechanic who was lost that day at Midway. They had his funeral and everything. And he was going to go down and listen to these POWs and just confirm that the Americans treated us just like we treated them. That's just the way war is. And he went down to the dock and he was blown away to see his chief mechanic who hadn't died, who had made it onto a life raft. They didn't know that had been two weeks on a life draft. The American rescue planes had saved him, took him back to America, and he, so they had an amazing embrace. They were close. And he said, what was it like? Did they mistreat you? Did they torture you? Did they, and he said, no, no, they didn't. And he told him what had happened. And he said, there was this one young girl who loved me like her father, she loved all the guys that way. She just treated us. She asked if she could help us in any way. And I said, why are you treating us so well? She wouldn't tell us. We all wanted to know what caused her to treat us this way. Finally, I said, why are you doing this? She said, Japanese soldiers killed my parents. That's why. And Fuchida said, that's disgusting. She should want revenge. That's dishonorable. But it gnawed away at his heart, this love. And so that day when he stood on the sidewalk, he said, I heard of a girl whose parents were killed by Japanese soldiers. But instead of seeking revenge against them, she offered forgiveness. She traveled very far just to serve them. I couldn't understand why she would do this. At first, I thought she must be crazy, that she should have taken revenge. But inside, deep inside, I was ashamed. Ashamed because I knew she had a sincere love. I asked myself, where does this love come from? The swelling crowd remained perfectly quiet, sensing they were witnessing something extraordinary. And I heard of an American prisoner. He tells another story. Yes, he did. He had heard of Jake DeShazer, a young man who grew up in Madras, Oregon. And Jake DeShazer was unemployed and life wasn't going so well, and he joined the service. And when the war broke out, Long story short, he became one of the Doolittle Raiders who flew the Doolittle Raid into Tokyo. Uh, and he was shot down over China. They ran out of fuel and they were shot down. And he was captured and he was tortured. And a gruesome, gruesome three and a half, most of the war. Uh, but he got his hands on a Bible. And he became a follower of Jesus Christ. He'd been a blasphemous rejecter but he became a believer in Jesus Christ. And he began, as soon as the war ended, he began telling anybody who'd listen what had happened to him. And he went to Japan. And he wrote a pamphlet called, I Was a Prisoner of Japan. And it was printed up as a tract by the thousands, in fact, millions. And earlier at that train station, Fuchida, who had a strange you know, respect for these American flyers who basically knew they were on a one-way mission. These Doolittle Raiders. And he was interested in what this Doolittle had to say. Not Doolittle, but DeShazer. And he, at that train station, he had picked, taken a tract from a guy. I was a prisoner in Japan, and he had read that tract. And that's why he went back to that train station about a year later to see if he might find a Bible. And he did find a Bible. I heard of an American prisoner who also found this secret, who somehow came to love his enemies. So I decided to study the book they studied, the Bible. And as I began to read, I began to understand. No, you see, God uses a variety of people. Peggy, Cavell, Jake DeShazer, 
who in the midst of torture found Jesus Christ and then began to tell his enemies? Now, witnessing, bearing testimony of what you know is the joy and the privilege of every Christian. You will receive power. They couldn't do this on their own. This was the Holy Spirit. And he transforms lives today, just like he did in 1948 and 49 and 50, and actually in 51 and 52, and I could say on and on, couldn't I? 